I did a Google video search for Lego haul. And do you want to guess how many results came back? 1.8 million. That's a lot. And many of these titles featured copious amounts of exclamation points and words like craziest and huge, big, massive, and well, you get the point. And, and if you watch these videos as I sometimes do, you might get the wrong impression about the Lego YouTube community. You might think that people go out and just buy Lego sets like there's no tomorrow and that budgets aren't real or don't need to be followed. And, and the reality is very, very different from that. And I don't want you to think that you have to keep up with the Joneses. And that really is the point of this video, to show you and tell you some things that might help you normalize your Lego hobby and, and not worry about what everyone else is doing. Also to show you a behind the scenes look at how we buy our Lego sets and why we buy them and how we strategize to maximize our Lego budget. Let's start with some money talk because in our world that's a very finite resource, but at the end I'll tell you five sets we would totally buy if money were no object. We're a middle class family. I work full time, but I'm not a medical doctor or lawyer or anything like that. Julia works part time and the kids of course are too young to have formal employment. The bottom line in terms of finances is that we have to be judicious about where our money goes, especially for luxury items such as Lego. So because of our financial situation, we just can't go out and buy a ton of Lego every single month. We have a family budget, just like many of you, where we have you know, money allocated for certain expenses. And we also save about 10% every month just in case something comes up or we want to make home improvements or things like that. So it's important to note that none of our Lego money actually comes out of that budget right there. It's also important to point out, especially for anyone interested in starting a YouTube channel, that there are expenses associated with, well, doing this. You'll need mics, lights, storage, external hard drives, and other such equipment. Last year, for instance, we bought a new tripod and even got this light box here to help us get better photos. We also bought our very first set of brand new display shelves, which honestly was a really cool moment for us. I think it's important to note that this is not a money-making venture for us at this point in time. Now, thanks to you, our channel is growing faster than it ever has, and we've been able to make more revenue, but it's just now starting to catch up with our normal channel expenses. If you've purchased our instructions for our super-sized LEGO Botanical Gardens, thank you so much. It's also a nice time to note that we are adding a new custom build to our instruction portfolio over at Rebrickable, and that is a big, massive remake of the 1980s LEGO Castle classic, The Guarded Inn. We will be dropping a bunch of videos related to this custom build in the next few weeks, but We've spent a lot of time making sure that this is a fun and entertaining build. The links for both of these instructions are down in the description below. While we're not gonna go into debt to operate this LEGO YouTube channel, we understand that in order to grow, we're gonna have to spend money. And that means what we buy and when we buy it are very strategic decisions. Perhaps this is a hot take, but there are a lot of huge LEGO YouTube channels that only build official sets, and that's a shame. The creators are great builders, but they rarely or never actually build their own creations at all or anymore. We want to avoid this on our channel. We still plan on doing reviews, but we also want to continue doing much more than that. We want to do custom builds, analytical videos, building challenges, and more. Because of our channel's scope, we need to be very intentional about which sets we buy on release day, that moment when everything comes out and there's a big rush at some LEGO stores to get the newest and greatest LEGO sets. This is important because believe it or not, attention on these sets will never be greater than the moment before and immediately after its release. Check out this figure showing Google searches for two recent icons sets, the Modular Natural History Museum and the Medieval Town Square. Note that the highest peak for each set comes the week after it was announced. So while there was a secondary peak for each around the time of its commercial release date, it is roughly half of its initial peak. 
From a content creator standpoint, this does put a little bit of a time frame on when we would want to get sets and make content based on them. And if the set is in our wheelhouse, a set that is one of the themes we really enjoy or thrive at working with, we want to make sure we prioritize that and get some content out there for you. But again, we want to do more than just review a set. Lego is, after all, a very interactive product. There are sets that will customize or even double in size. We'll make modular buildings or alternative builds. We'll compare sets to other recent similar sets and we'll even display some of them. But the key thing that we're always thinking about, how can we have fun with Lego? As a channel, we're always looking for ways to introduce new content, ideas, and expand our reach. One of our goals this year is to tell more stories relating to our custom builds, reviews, and how we do our LEGO time here as a family. This means we have to be, again, strategic about when we buy sets and how we create content surrounding them. This means we have to think creatively about our purchases and how we can maximize our fun and our content from those sets. For example, in the month of April, we're going to be telling some stories as it relates to some custom builds related to that Guarded Inn I just mentioned a few moments ago. There's going to be a lot of cool things with that, and we want to think about how we make this fun for us as well as you. Of course, being strategic about which sets we buy also means we don't buy every set we want. In fact, there are some really cool sets we would have purchased if we didn't have a channel. A good example of this is the Ideas Fender Stratocaster that came out a couple of years ago. I play a Strat and getting the set would be really cool for me, but given our strategic focus and how we have to make decisions related to our budget, it didn't make sense to get it at that time. And that is an important lesson for all of us to keep in mind when we watch videos that talk about the biggest haul of all time and how much money people spend in the LEGO store every single month. Reality dictates that 99% of people, including us, aren't going to be spending $500 to $1,000 or even $200 or even $100 at the LEGO store or online every single month. And when we see professional YouTubers buy all these LEGO, keep in mind that it's their full-time job, that they are buying sets that are going to dictate content for the rest of the month or future months. They have a large following and thus have more resources. But not everybody is in that same position, and that probably includes you. So don't worry about keeping up with the professional YouTubers. It makes no sense, and I think it can make us have a lot of anxiety about what we don't have instead of being grateful for what we do have. Saying no is fundamental also to staying on a budget. Of course, so is using resources wisely. Even though LEGO sets don't necessarily come with coupons, you can find many sets on sale if you wait long enough or look in the right places. For instance, some sets aren't well received by fans, including the Hulkbuster or the Foosball Table, and are marked down pretty quickly. And if you want to get those, you can find a really good deal on them. Or if you don't mind crowds, LEGO offers really good in-person sales and gifts with purchase on Black Friday. Even if you only want to buy sets online, there are plenty of moments throughout the year when sets are available for sale, whether through LEGO.com, Amazon, Walmart, or other retailers worldwide. Another great way to find LEGO deals is to keep up with various Instagram, YouTube, and other social media accounts. They can oftentimes identify when and where things are going to be on sale, and you can take advantage of that. For instance, we saw an account post that there were Galaxy Explorers 25% off at Walmart just a couple of months after the set was released. Now, when we went to Walmart to check it out, the price tag didn't suggest that the set was on sale, but when you scanned it, it certainly showed that it was 25% off. If you're building your own creations, another great way to save money is to build small or even use pieces that you already have in your collection. While the pick-a-brick wall at the LEGO store offers great value, be careful not to buy a bunch of pieces that you're never going to use. Instead, think about planning out your mocks ahead of time, whether sketching them out or using software like Studio. That way you can pull pieces for the creation from your existing collection and then make targeted purchase on BrickLink for the ones that you need to help you save money. Perhaps another thing that you need to hear is that not every LEGO set you own needs to go on display. 
In fact, a lot of system sets fall into this category for us, and they could, of course, be different for you, but for system sets, they might have some really cool minifigs, the build might be fun, it could be a set that the kids really like, and we want to see how it works and review it, but at the end, we'll take it apart and put it into our parts bin because we can use those parts for our own creations. And that way we don't have to think about, okay, where are we gonna put everything that's on display and then order pieces separately for our creations. It also allows us to keep our pieces up to date, up to speed with the current Lego offerings and stretches our ability to build the most unique things with the most up-to-date pieces and building techniques. So I hope you learned something about how we operate as a YouTube channel and that some of these tips might help you. But before you go, I promised you five sets that we would buy if money were no object. So here you go. Number five is the Millennium Falcon. I think it's the most iconic ship from the most iconic Lego theme. And who needs the $850 plus tax anyway? Number four is the Office. There's some great minifigs, great Easter eggs in the set, and it's one that I would get because I like The Office. Number three is the Friends Apartments. I know it's recently retired, and I like Friends, but not as much as Julia. This set would be for her, but there's a lot of fun elements to that set, and we'd have a lot of fun combining that with the central perk. Number two, Pac-Man. I think this is a great set, great build. It looks fantastic on display and it looks like a fun part of 1980s and 90s nostalgia. So definitely would be on my list. But the number one set that I would get if money were no option right now actually would be the Snow White's Cottage. I think this is a really cool set, not only because of the minifigs and the subject matter, but because it has a medieval feel and we've been getting a lot of medieval sets as of late. I want to see how it looks next to the medieval town square, the Lion Knight's castle, even the blacksmith shop to see if we can incorporate it into a larger castle layout. And I haven't seen any of those videos on YouTube yet. So we'd like to maybe be able to do one, but in order to do that, we'd have to have more revenue. And that's where you can help us out by liking this video, watching this video down here that the YouTube algorithm thinks you would like. Thanks for watching and always remember to keep building together.